Hey guys, it's your boy Harry Wilmington here. And from here on out, I am your introvert dating coach. So today we're doing another video review from another content creator. This one's name is Courtney Ryan. And Courtney Ryan is currently in the space whereby she is giving men dating advice and insights uh, from a woman's perspective. I'm gonna go through her video, I'm gonna play parts of it, and then I'm going to respond to various parts to give you guys the insights on where I think she's giving great advice and where I think there could be better advice given, all right? I'm Courtney Ryan, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about five tips to have a great first date. So number one on my list is to dress well. So I'm not saying dress like someone you're not or dress like what you think she would want you to look like, but just dress like the best version of yourself. This is actually very solid advice. You don't want to be dressing yourself in a way that's going to make you feel uncomfortable and act awkward on the date. Uh, and then it depends on the date that you're planning too. Because if you're doing a picnic date as a first date, you don't want to show up in a suit. You want to show up in jeans and a nice pressed shirt. Ultimately, you wanna make yourself as comfortable as you possibly can, so that way you can radiate that comfortableness onto the person that you're taking out. Dress for the setting that you're going to be in. You don't want to look like you tried too hard, so definitely don't come wearing a full-fledged suit unless for some reason you are famous and rich and fancy and going to a gala and taking her for the first date, which I really wouldn't recommend in the first place. Women are actually judging you on how you look on those first dates, partially because they, they honestly, they are also attracted by the visual, but also because you gotta think, a woman's gonna be picturing how you fit into her social life. And the first thing she's gonna be thinking is, when she brings you around her friends, are you gonna be somebody that is going to be presentable enough to want her to bring you around them? And if you're dressing like a slob on date one, just to meet her, she's already thinking he's probably gonna dress equally as bad on these other dates. And the other thing she said was about the first date itself. Like, no, she said you don't have to like take her to like some kind of expensive thing. Understand that most women are gonna come from this of they're expecting like a relatively nice evening out, but nothing that's gonna put you so far in the bank that they're gonna think that they now owe you some kind of physical pleasure or other things that they might not be ready for. Next on my list is to pick the perfect place. So you're gonna wanna pick somewhere where you're going to be able to get to know them to an extent. Um, you don't wanna get to know them them too much on the first date. Think of this like the trailer for the ultimate movie that could be the relationship, okay? And also, like she said, you wanna pick a place where you're gonna get to know her. So this really takes away from like doing something like the movies, for example. So you wanna find something you can do whereby it's either an activity where you guys are gonna be like interacting with each other or like a dinner or some kind of coffee thing where you guys can sit down and actually talk to each other and really get the experience of learning if you guys can even have a conversation, let alone spend a lot of time together. I don't recommend bringing her to your place on the first date. I think going somewhere public where you can be in a public setting but get to know each other a little bit more one-on-one -on -one is very important. Women are gonna be more apt to say yes to a date with you if you're suggesting a place that is a public setting. Women have a lot more safety concerns to try to sniff out before they com completely commit to you and before they com are completely comfortable with being in a place with you by themselves. So like I said about bringing someone to your personal space on the first date, this is just so that you don't show all your cards on the first date. You wanna leave a little room for imagination nation, a little room for mystery. Um, you don't want to show everything you have to offer on the first date. Yeah, and aside from the whole uh, building comfortability thing, there's also something to be said of, like she said in this video, about leaving a little bit of mystery. A lot of you guys go on these first dates and I said you want to blab your whole life story because you're thinking the more she knows about me, the more she's going to connect with me and she can make a decision right after this first date or whether she wants to like have me be serious in her life. On average, it takes a woman two to three months to solidify her feelings for you. She needs needs that time to build. So for women, it's gonna be better if it's a slower build than what you may be ready for. Even if you get a hookup, hooking up does not equal you're now in a relationship, okay? Slow it down. Don't think a like very fancy dinner date is a good first date because if you don't even know if you like this girl or not, why do you wanna spend tons of money on her? And women are very suspicious about that. Most women are reasonable and recognize that on this first date, you're trying to get to know them you're not trying to break the bank. Also, a fancy dinner date is not a great first date because you kind of lock yourself into this very nice, long, drawn out, formal meal. Say you get like 20 minutes into this date and you know that you do not like this girl, you are stuck there in a four course meal with a girl that you don't like and you're gonna have to pay for her. And also, let's be honest guys, you're gonna be resentful. If you take a girl to an uber expensive place and after 20 minutes of talking to her, you're like, oh crap, she is definitely not the one but you're there, you trying to ask her to split the bill, probably not gonna happen. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna spend two to $300 on a meal with somebody that you know 
you know you're not gonna wanna get with it. Money does not equate feelings with women. So you're gonna wanna be able to have a conversational element on your first date. If you meet a girl online and take her to the movies for the very first time you meet her, you're both going to be sitting there in the dark very awkwardly sharing a thing of popcorn and it's just going to be so awkward and so uncomfortable and even worse, you're not gonna be able to get to know them at all because you're gonna be sitting in silence in a movie for two hours. Women you're just meeting online for the first time, a woman you met at a bar or at a party or you know you picked up doing some cold approaching in the public or whatever none of those situations equate with like doing a movie date in a way that's going to be like a positive outlook okay not that it's going to be the worst thing ever but like she said you're not going to really get that chance to get to know that person as deeply and as intimately as you could if you were doing some kind of date whereby talking or interacting with them would conversation. So I would argue that conversation is the most important part of a first date. On your first date, you should get to know a little bit more about who this girl is, what she's into. Um, you should definitely be curious and ask her questions, but she should be doing the same for you. So if she is not giving you anything in return and she doesn't seem like she wants to get to know you at all, then maybe that should be a sign to you that maybe she just isn't into you. And that's totally fine. On these dates, your goal is to get to know as much about her as you possibly can. Now, you don't want to do this reporter style. You don't want to just be sitting there, so tell me about what you do for work. Oh, that's great. Tell me about uh, your favorite TV show and what is your favorite color. There's a give and take here where it's two people doing a conversation. So you're gonna be asking her questions. She's gonna answer them. Ideally, she'll ask you questions back. You'll answer some questions. There'll be some statements back and forth. There'll be some nice little banter, or whatever. But I say this because I know there are guys out there that go on dates and think, okay, I gotta do everything I can to impress this girl. So let me just like pull out all my tricks. It's not even like, you have to do a lot of to impress her. Most women just wanna be heard and about 95% of dates that women go on, the guys that they're with are over talking, they're talking constantly about themselves, they don't really care if she asks a question and when she does, he somehow turns into a story about himself. So just you being able to ask her a question about herself and then her being able to answer it she's gonna have a great time. So say you met this girl online and you've creeped on her Instagram and you know things about her that maybe you shouldn't at this point. Don't ask her questions that you think she's gonna to want to answer or that are going to um, make her like you more. You're gonna to want to be candid in this. You're not gonna to wanna to pre-prepare your questions or seem like a robot. You're going to want to go with the flow, ask her about different things, notice the things that she's into and the things that she lights up when she talks about and see if the things that she lights up about are things that you guys both have in common. This is where I agree with a lot of what she said, but I also know that as an introverted guy, early on in your dating process, if you are not used to doing a lot of dates, that you may have a hard time coming up with questions on the fly. Back in the day, I would like make sure I knew topical stuff. I knew what was going on in the news, whether it was like political news, entertainment news, uh, stuff that you know the social media was really talking about, just enough things and highlights to where if I got stuck in a conversation, I could bring up a topic that was going on that ideally she would know about as well. If you're looking on a woman's profile, you can prepare to ask her more in-depth questions about things that you already know about her. Those can be jumping off points. Now the idea though, is when you bring up these points or bring up these questions is to make it sound like you're bringing it about in a natural way. But ideally, Really, you should be listening to what she's saying when you ask her a question and then trying to figure out what follow-up questions you can ask based on that. So if you ask her about her day and she says, oh, I had a hard day at work today. I had I had like three business meetings I had to go to. You could say, oh, what was one of the meetings about? Oh, or what time was the meeting at? Or what was it on your lunchtime? What'd you eat for lunch? And then remember, you don't wanna be a robot. So you don't wanna consistently be asking questions, but you don't wanna also be consistently just giving statements. It's a mixture of both. Don't sit there and talk about yourself the entire time. I personally have been on first dates where all the guy does is talk about himself and doesn't ask me anything. It's really awkward and just very unenjoyable for the other party. This is true. And I've heard so many women complain about this simple thing. Now, I know why you're doing it. You're doing it because you have in your head again that you need to be the one to impress her. And so you're trying to give her every single bit of your life story so that way she can find out how impressive you actually are and want to date you. You're going to get more women attracted to you if you're asking them about themselves because women want to be heard 
more so than hearing you blab on about yourself. Number four is knowing when to stop the date or knowing when to continue. So this is another reason why it's so important to pick a place that is public, that has a definite end. For example, maybe you take her out to brunch and the end of that part of the date is when the bill is paid and you guys are done eating. At that point, you need to decide do I want to continue my date with this girl or am I not really feeling it and we should just end it here? Here's a great way to signal that the end of a date is near. The waiter will come to your table throughout the course of the night and will you know, say, hey, do you guys need anything else? At which point you'll say to the waiter, oh, no, we're good. Hey, but by the way, uh, you can go ahead and bring us uh, either some to-go boxes or the check. That is the signal that the date is coming to a close. Typically, I err on the side of doing this around the 45 minute, between 45 minutes to like 75 minute mark. For that first date, what you don't wanna risk is messing it up by staying too long and overstaying your welcome. Because inevitably, with hours on end of spending time together, you could start saying the wrong thing or doing actions that early on in the dating process might turn this woman off. All you're trying to do is make the best first impression you possibly can. And so, the more contained that that time is the better. So maybe you're feeling like you're ready to go. Maybe you're getting vibes from her that she's ready to go. Maybe you're not feeling it. At that point, I would just call it quits. Obviously be polite, say that you had a nice time and say your goodbyes. But if you feel like you're both having a really great time and there is still more fun to be had, then be spontaneous and ask her to join you on something that maybe you were planning on doing next or later in the day. Proceed with caution. There's no penalty. If you go on a first date, you keep it 45 minutes to 75 minutes and go home. If, however, you decide to expand from a 75 minute date to like a five hour date, there's a good chance over time she's gonna start getting fatigued, she's gonna start maybe getting a little cranky, or she's gonna be slowing down her touching of you, slow down her conversation with you, okay? So you might be going on these dates that are lasting four, five, six hours, and you're thinking in your head, she spent six hours with me, she must have had a good time but what's happening when you call her for the next date? If you're finding that that next date you're trying to set up, she's either not answering or she's being non-committal, then what that could mean is that you spent too much time with her on that first date and now she doesn't wanna see you. The probability of you keeping the date short and getting a second date is far greater than you expanding that first date out and then asking for another one and then you're probably not gonna get it. For example, me and Teddy had brunch on our first date and we just clicked so instantly and naturally and really neither one of us I think were ready to end our date at just brunch so Teddy invited me to go um, shopping with him. He had to run a few errands and so I tagged along. It was very attractive to me when we were done eating and Teddy invited me to do something else. You know, it showed me that he could think on his feet, um, that he was interested in me and that he was spontaneous and fun. I hesitated to include this part in here because some of you guys will see this and say, but Harry, she just said she did an extra thing after the, the brunch thing and she had a good time and they're still dating and she really loves him. This, my friends, is what I call an outlier, okay? This is an exception to the rule. I'm all about probability and averages. So, can this happen? Yes. On average though, the majority of women will be fine with you keeping the date short. Pay the bill. On the first date, I personally am a girl. I have traditional values. I like when the guy pays. I think it's attractive, on the first date at least. So just take the initiative and grab for it. The girl's going to like that, I promise. If you're the one that is hitting her up online or calling her or texting her and you're the one asking for this first date, then you pay. If she's the one that comes to you and says, hey, I think we should go on a date or this is net, either A, she could pay for the whole thing, B, you guys could split it, or C, just out of the niceness of your heart, if you just so choose to do so, you could pay the bill. Number five on my list is be clear about next steps. So like I said, be honest if you don't wanna see her again. Maybe she's really into you and you are just not feeling her at all. Don't get her hopes up and thinking that she's gonna see you again. If you're someone that's looking for something serious and you know that the girl is too and you've made that clear from the beginning, then I think it's very important to just be very clear and very honest about expectations and how you're feeling. Up to this point, most of her advice has been pretty good. I do have a few caveats about what she said here specifically though. A first date is nothing more than an inquiry to figure out if based on the things that you experience with them in this little setting here, if you guys want to do more stuff or not. To at the end of the day be like, hey, so I think this date was really, really great. I think we get along well and I'm really starting to feel you and I like you a whole lot and I think we'd be great together and I think we should go on more dates. Well, to a woman hearing that, 
that's gonna feel like a lot of pressure. When you verbalize something to a woman, they're gonna read into it with three times more emotion than you probably would. This is why you don't say to a girl at the end of a date, hey, so I really like you and think we'd be great together. Because she's hearing that as, he's already ready to marry me. Oh my God, he's already obsessed with me and it's only been one date. So there's no need to have a conversation about feelings, to have a conversation about, hey, so you think the date went well, so what do you think about a second date possibly happening? Like, those are conversations, A, that can honestly make you look needy and desperate, and it can also read to the woman that, again, you're already future thinking and you're already making a, a positive decision about her. I have found in my practice, in, in me dating, that it's actually worked better when at the end of the date, I give a girl a hug, I say I had a really, really great time, get home safe, and that's it. I don't say we should have a second date. I don't say I'm feeling these things for you because there needs to be an air of mystery about what your feelings actually are. So when your date comes to an end, you don't have to tell her right away, like, when can I see you again? You honestly don't wanna seem too eager or too available. So give it some thought. Think about maybe where you'd wanna take her next. Um, you don't need to jump on something so quickly. Don't tell her what you think she wants to hear. If you're not sure if you wanna see her again, don't say anything yet. Just go home, think about it, sleep on it, and see where you end up. If a woman had a great date with you, I have found whether you wait a day, three days, two weeks, she'll just be happy when you hit her up again to ask for the date. So another important thing here is to not make yourself seem so available. I think a lot of times it's a turn off for girls if you're super available and ready to see them 24 seven. While this might seem great in the beginning, there comes a point when this ends and you're not always going to be available to spend 24 seven with them. So you don't want to set unrealistic expectations in the very beginning. You don't want to do anything early on in the dating process that you're not willing to carry on later. Think about like if you hook up with a woman and she does like this amazing thing to you in bed. And then like three months later, she doesn't want to do it anymore. How annoyed would you be? You don't want to set up, hey, I'm going to text her all day long. I'm going to call her for a date every single day. I'm going to bring her flowers every single time that I see her. If you're not going to be able to carry that action on long term, then you don't want to present it early on whereby she's going to notice that kind of stuff. And then later on, if you change up, you can look suspicious, or she can just get so annoyed by it but doesn't know how to have a conversation with you about it that she gets annoyed and then she just doesn't wanna see you anymore, okay? But also, women do not wanna see you 24-7, 365 when they first see you. Because even though she likes you, your new stimuli, she has a whole other life going on that has been happening before you came in and that life is still going on. And you trying to suddenly bombard her, yourself into her life and take away all that time is not going to be fair to her. So this is why I tell you guys, those first, those first couple of weeks dating, you keep it to one date a week, maybe possibly two, but I err on the side of doing one date a week until she starts asking for more dates. But if you do wanna see her again, tell her. At the end of my date with Teddy that we spent 12 hours together, it was pretty obvious that we were both kind of feeling it and liking each other. So at the end of our date, he said, I would love to see you again. And it was just a great way to end the date and made me feel better knowing that we were both kind of on the same page. Now again, can this work? The answer is yes. It's not the worst thing in the world to say, hey, we should see each other again sometime soon. But I still err on the side of, I don't try to specifically set up a second date when I'm on a date. So now I'm gonna talk about something that everyone dreads, which is the after date text. So as a girl, um, this is something that we all talk to our friends about. Should I text him and tell him that I had a good time? Should I wait for him to text me? If you're a guy and you had a great time with this girl, text her when you get home and tell her that you had a great time, it was great meeting her, or something along those lines. Lines. Just let her know that you had a good time so she isn't sitting there freaking out with her friends, wondering if she should wait for you to text her or what her next move should be. Here's the thing. Everything that she just said is the exact reason why you don't need to be sending after date texts. Because think about this, okay? Think about the logic of what she's saying. So you're gonna go out with a girl. You're gonna spend all this money. You're gonna get dressed up. You're gonna take it to a nice place. You're gonna to talk to her for hours on end. You're gonna to get to the end of the date. You're gonna probably give her a hug. You're gonna say, I had a nice time. It was great meeting you, all this other stuff. And then she's gonna go home and she's gonna wait for you to text her. And if you don't, what's gonna happen? She's gonna freak out. Why is she gonna freak out? She's gonna freak out because if she really likes you, she's wanting to know if she made a good enough impression on you for you to want to ask for that second date. And if you don't give her that validation, now her mind has to wonder. And it only, I'm sorry to say this, it only then intensifies what she's feeling for you or the conclusion she's coming to about you off of just that first date, all right? She will know 
that you had a good time on the date when you text and call her three to four days from now asking her for a second date. She does not need validation that night. She doesn't need it the next day. And also, like she said, she and her girlfriends had the talk about, should I text him and let him know I had a good time? This is net. You know you had a good time. You knew you, she was, she, you could have you know, probably banged her that night if, if she was so inclined, but you didn't because you're trying to be that cool in that first date. You already know this. But because she now has a higher interest in you than when the night started, she's one of that validation. When you take a girl on a stellar date and she really does have a good time, a great way to read her interest is that she's going to reach out to you and say, hey, just want to thank you again for the great time. Hey, just want you to know I had a fantastic night. Because women that like you, they cannot help but to show you and let you know that they are interested. But you don't have to give this thing of like, I got to text her back and call her right when I get back home. None of that is necessary. Would it be a nice thing to do? Yes. But what I found is that sometimes doing the nice thing does not equate to it being an effective thing. And there's nothing mean about waiting a couple days to call her for that next date either. All this to say, what she said actually argues for the reason not to send that after date text because if they like you, they can't help but show you and then they'll be coming after you at text and if they're chasing you, they can't be replacing you. I know this is contrary to popular belief. Maybe some girls are into this whole game thing where you act uninterested in her, but if you are trying to attract a nice girl that you're gonna wanna take home to your mom, that maybe you're gonna wanna have a relationship with, text her and tell her that you had a good time. If she responds with similar energy to your text, you can tell that she feels the same way and she had a really great time too. Now I think it's okay to maybe ask her out again. She tried to put a qualifier in there about how, well, if she's a nice girl that you take home to mom, then it's perfectly fine to text her. I've dated women who were fine to take home to mom. I've dated women who I honestly, she was she was kind and she was a freak, but I, I would not want people knowing who she is or who they were or whatever. They all respond to the same thing, which is if you show them a good enough time on a date, they cannot help but let you know and they will text you that that after date text. I haven't sent after date text in years and I still manage to be able to have multiple dates with people and get into relationships with people that I have not sent after date how you doing text too. Now what she did get right is this. Anytime a woman's reaching out to you, that is signaling that she wants more of your attention because she likes you. If she sends you that, hey, I had a great time text or whatever, if it's like two or three hours right afterwards, you can just say, hey, I had a great time too. It was nice meeting you, yada, 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 okay? If she sends any kind of text after that before, like I said, I typically tell you guys to wait four days before you call for that second date. If within that four days though, she hits you up again, that's when you can say, hey, I was thinking we should go out again on this day at this time at this place. If it goes four days where she doesn't hit you up again, then on that fourth day, that's when you would hit her up and ask her for the date, okay? But either way, you're gonna reach out at some point and ask for that date. If she's reaching out to you, that's when you can ask for the date when it's incoming, okay? So maybe say something like, hey, had a great time with you today. I don't know what the rest of your week looks like, but I would love to see you again. Or I would love to take you out again. Something like that. So you're gonna wanna take it slow, but definitely show your interest. And that's how you're going to land a second date with her and see where it goes. Again, I stress to you guys, you're showing your interest when you wait a few days to call her and then you call her for that second date. All she's gonna care about is, do you wanna see me again? So whether you say it that night or whether you say it four nights from now, but again, probability wise, you're gonna get better results if you wait four days from now. When you call her up and ask for the date, she's gonna say yes. And women will justify in their head, oh, he's probably working a lot. He's that he's got this going on and that going on during our date, so he's very, very busy. So, you know, hopefully he'll reach out again because I had a great time. But if, if he's busy right now, I understand he'll get to me when he can. Women will make excuses for guys that they want to see because they just care about being able to see him at all. Overall, like I said, Courtney Ryan's channel is great. There are definitely a few points in here that I disagree with just based on my experience dating as a guy. That said, hey, if you ever happen to watch this, Courtney, I'd love to have you on my show because I think you're a great content creator and I'd love to have some of this dialogue with you. Ultimately, guys, you gotta be mindful when you're on these first dates. You're trying to make a good impression. You're trying to give her the best time possibly can and you really wanna focus on what's going to make her feel like she's having the best possible outcome for this date. When that happens, you'll be able to increase her interest in a way where by she's going to want that second date and she's going to want to hear from you. This is why you don't need to be sending those after date texts right away because 
You need her to want to hear from you. And sometimes guys cut it short whereby they have a good time with a girl on a date, they get in their car and they want to text her right away. She has had no time to sit with herself to think about how much she really enjoyed that date. Like I said, four out of five on the information that she gives out and definitely go check out her channel because she has a lot of great content on there about guys and what they can do to better themselves in front of women and how women are sometimes interpreting the things that we do. Now, if you want help with some of the stuff talked about in this video, go to my website, introvertdatingsuccess.com. I got a lot of great content there that is designed to help you guys figure out your dating life so that way you can be the kind of guy that gets first dates and is able to really impress women to want a second one. Thank you for watching this episode of the Introvert Dating Success Show. If you found the info in this episode to be helpful, please show your support by clicking on the tip jar tab, the link of which can be found at the website and in the description below. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment on this episode and catch new episodes right here on YouTube or wherever podcasts can be found. In the meantime, be sure to check out these other episodes so you too can learn to date as your introverted self while still getting your precious alone time. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace.